Welcome to another episode of Cinepress. So today we have a very special episode. We're actually reviewing the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie. We watched this movie on Thursday at the premiere at the Chinese theater. We had a great time, but now we've had some time to marinate over our thoughts over the film. We wanted to talk a little bit about what we came up with. So, Tio, what did you think of Dragon Ball Super Broly? It was one of the best Dragon Ball movies like ever to be produced and is officially canon. I mean, I know like the Frieza Resurrection Frieza and like the Gods was canon to the series, but mm -hmm. this this made me actually like Broly as a character. Yeah. He wasn't like two dimensional in this. He was actually like Even though the title he makes the title that much longer of the yeah. movie which we were just talking about. Dragon Ball Super Broly. <laughs> Chris Sabat had a hard time memorizing the hashtag that he wanted to do for the movie. We love to use your phones and we're encouraging you to use the hashtag DB uh, D oh my gosh, what is it? But let's get into the details. Right now, this is light spoilers. We're gonna get into heavy spoilers later. I'll leave a time code if you wanna skip the heavy spoilers. That makes no sense. Who wants to just skip the heavy spoilers? But I think you guys all wanna wait to watch the movie because there's a lot of surprises in store for you. So as you were saying, you know, this is kind of like the third finally canon movie. Mm -hmm. I kind of viewed it as a trilogy, you know, really. Mm -hmm. Cause like there's Battle of Gods, which is about, okay, Goku's trying to, like, he kind of takes a spotlight there, you yeah, know, because he's, he's got to be the Super Saiyan God who fights the Earth, right? It's a very lighthearted movie. Resurrection F tries to go more towards the Z thing, mm -hmm. and I think this movie hits a perfect middle ground of blending in that comedy and that sort of seriousness that you want out of a Dragon Ball fight, right? Yeah. Oh, and they go way deeper into the, like, the Saiyan lore. Mm -hmm. like, a lot of stuff got retconned, but it was okay. Well, the Goku be, being basically Superman was... Yeah, like, yeah. There's, there's a little bit of theming. No, I noticed this like a few days after. I was like sitting over there and I was just thinking... I was making lunch. I was like, oh my god, wait a minute. The reason why they did all... They showed all that stuff, right? The backstory is because it's like the theme of this film is like the sins of the father, right? Mm -hmm. All of the three fathers. The three, they show all the dads of all our main sayings. We got Goku, Vegeta, and Broly. Mm -hmm. And that... Like, it just like, it was like, oh my god, it's so deep because like, that's why everything connects, right? All of it. The, so, yeah, there's, there's a really brilliant sort of writing. This is some of the best writing of a Dragon Ball movie I've seen in the last few decades, really. Mm -hmm. And I was telling Tio on the way out, you heard it in my other recording, I think this harkens back to more of the original Dragon Ball than any other piece of Dragon Ball media as of recent years, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Also, let's talk about the animation. I love the uh, animation. It reminds me of old school Dragon mm. Ball Z, but mm. it's like mm, updated. Delicious. Mm. Delicious. So delicious. Like, I was like, oh my god, like the Vegeta versus Broly fight? That part, if that don't get you hyped, you're not a Dragon Ball Z fan. Like, no cap. Yeah. Just saying. There's just some great shots in there. The cinematographer deserves an award, I think. There's mm -hmm. just long, minute-long sweeping shots that follow the fight because, you know, when there's a limited budget in the television production world for Super and for mm -hmm. Z, they just kind of teleport around and they're just like, you know, doing these punches, oh, yeah. right, you know? There's no technique or flow to it, right? But for this, you get to see actual martial arts. Every like, punch. Like Dragon Ball used to be. Yes, so exactly. That's what we're talking Z, about. Mm -hmm. But like, now that they're, you know, so strong and so super fast, it's even like more, like, Amazing now. It really depends on like, the, the budget. Yeah. The budget. When you got a big budget like that, it looks amazing. Like I've never seen like Vegeta's actual fighting style mm -hmm. yeah, incorporated yeah. into a fight until I saw this movie. He's an acrobat. You know, the way yeah. he moves is an acrobat because he's a shorter guy, right? Mm -hmm. But he's strong. So that makes more sense to me that he'd be more of an acrobat. And Goku would be the one who's like falls into more of a spiritual martial arts sort of realm, you know? So mm -hmm. which they show they show <laughs> off like brilliantly. We can talk about the pacing of the fight a little bit because naturally with Dragon Ball movies, like most of it ends up becoming the fighting. Mm -hmm. But for the, that huge half hour chunk of the movie at the beginning, it's all just set up towards this, this uh, major fight. But even that major fight now, it's paced very well. It's, it's mm -hmm. paced so then the transformations kind of don't, you know, feel like you're being held out on. Mm -hmm. Every single transformation kind of has their place in this story. I was thinking about the structure of the fight and how things play out, right? Would you agree with that? Yeah, besides the Gogeta part. The Gogeta part, I feel like that was just fan service and it was kind of like just rushed in there. Mm, a little bit, yeah. Little bit. I didn't... mean, it was cool to see, but I was like, oh yeah, they definitely added this for fan service. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Overall, there's a lot of great fan service moments in mm -hmm. this film, which I think we're gonna hop into heavy spoilers now because there's, the fan service moments are dead fan service. I want to talk about my favorite one. I was telling Tio on the way into the theater, there absolutely needs to be a scene where Broly gets punched in the abs and not like right there and twisted at and nothing happens. 
and that's the first thing that happens to an adult Broly is he tries to get in a scuffle protecting his new friends on the Frieza Force ship and everything. He gets punched right there and nothing. Nothing happens. Nothing happens to this man. And then Gogeta punched him here like four freaking times. <laughs> <laughs> and he just ate it. Day, I'm proud of you, Broly. Broly is doing nap day. I asked, <laughs> as you saw in the video, I asked the voice actor when we got this uh, picture taken and the back sign. He's like, so did Broly do ab workouts this time? Did he, do, did, he do, did he fix his core? And he's like, yeah, oh, you're gonna, you're gonna love this movie. He told me you're gonna love this movie and he absolutely knew what was gonna happen. They did it, they absolutely did it. Mm -hmm. They make Frieza such a bastard in this movie again. Yeah. He's such a bastard. I love him for it. I love him for it and I, I was like, I was feeling all the things that Goku felt the first time Krillin got blown up, you know, mm -hmm. and Frieza makes these like really daring, he makes the same betrayals that he did back uh, in the original Frieza saga and I don't know, how, you watched Super, right? How does it kind of play out in Super? Because he kind of, he turns into a bit of an ally, right? And he turns a little into an bit ally. Joke, he's, right? still, he's still Frieza at the end of the day, but he turned into an ally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Frieza is probably the best villain in Dragon Ball Z. Yes, I'm just yes. going to say that. Definitely, most definitely, I think. Because, come on now, Boo was platonic as fuck. Like, he, <laughs> he was just this embodiment of evil, and that was it. And then Cell, he was pretty much just a whole bunch of fan fiction mixed into one being. Yeah, and a lot of different changes from Toriyama last mm -hmm. minute because of the editors. Oh yeah, the editor was but like, you can't have this old guy and this, uh, you what, can't have these mine? teenagers, <laughs> you can't, these have, teenagers, these, and he can't have these bug it. guys, so I mean, it, it was both his old editor and his current editor at the that's time, a lot, so. A lot of the fly. Yeah, it was, that's a little stressful position to be in, but he did the best he could out of it, Frieza. I think. Space Hitler. Frieza is all. Space Hitler. Yes, yeah, Space Hitler. Slash Lumber. We were sitting in there thinking, oh god, Space Hitler is back. Man, what a jerk. What a huge jerk. Yeah. <laughs> Get him, guys. Oh, and the comedy in this was funny. The comedy in this is on point. But I do want to talk about one dramatic moment that kind of just caught us both by surprise. Um, there's a moment when Broly finally speaks up and has a long monologue for the first time. Oh yeah, Broly speaks in this. He doesn't just say Kakarot. Yeah. Broly, yeah, yeah. Broly is an amazing and fleshed out character in this, actually. He's finally given a character. He's given the innocence of Goku, I feel like, mm -hmm. with a lot of the rage of Vegeta. Yeah, That's it makes the kind sense of thing. Too. Yeah, he's very childlike in mentality, which is... It makes so much sense, and it's kind of a very different thing than we see seen out of our main two Because Broly's a man-child. He spent years, like 40 years, on a freaking deserted planet. Yeah. So, of course, his social cues and his social interactions are going to be limited because all his dad wanted to do was for him to train to be able to fight. Mm -hmm. He knows enough language to get by, but, like, socially, he's inept. Yeah. And it makes sense. He's it makes like, complete sense. He's like Tarzan, mm -hmm. in a way. But that moment, though, they, they like he meets two friends on the Frieza Four ship. They go inside, and then they talk about his little, um, you know, I think the previous design he also had. He had, he had the little, uh, the middle school sweater look. I, mm -hmm. I like to call it the middle school sweater look. You tie around your waist to keep it because you don't want to hold it right. Mm -hmm. They finally explain that. That's like a pet that he had on the planet where he was trying to survive and grow up. His first friend. And. The, the pet's ear got cut off and he wears it now to remember it and I was looking at T I was like what movie are we watching man? What happened? Was a, I thought it was a Disney what movie are we watching? I thought it was a Disney it got so movie. sad all of a sudden and even Brendan who wasn't a f a familiar with Dragon Ball really loved it. Yeah. Like, oh. He was like oh my gosh yeah it, there's something in this movie for everyone and I think I think for the anniversary of Dragon Ball, you know, just being out for so long, they really did everything they could to bring in not just like the hardcore fans, but if you're a casual fan, you're going to enjoy this movie too. Oh, and Goku, I feel like he's the most Goku he's been in a while. Yeah, we both said that, you know. Like, super, okay, Goku isn't the smartest guy, right? <laughs> but like, Super made Goku seem like a complete, utter moron. Like, all the character progression he's had over the years, it was just like, Let's throw it out the window. Yeah, yeah. he's just kind of stupid now. He just likes to fight and eat, and that's it, you know. But the thing about Goku is, people will debate about this, and I think there's a lot of pushback from Toriyama wanting to make Goku Superman, right? Mm -hmm. For a while, because the Americans did that. He kind of just made him more about that. Mm -hmm. But early kid Goku has always been a hero. Like, let's mm -hmm. get this straight. You know, when, you know, there's so many instances, like, you know, when his friends get killed, he's mm -hmm. the one who goes out of the way. The first thing he does is, like, try to pick up Master Roshi's turtle and carry him over to the beach like for miles. He's very stubborn about that, but he always wants to do the right thing. And there's this brilliant moment in the middle of the Broly fight where he tries to stop Vegeta from killing him. Vegeta's so ready to kill him and he fires all these blasts at him and he doesn't do it. Mm -hmm. 
but then he stops the fight, you know, with Broly and says, you don't have to do this, you know, this, I know this is something that your father kind of put you up to, but you don't have to, you don't have to do this because we're the same kind, you know. Yeah. It was very much like a, a acceptance of their brotherhood in a little bit, and, you know, there's so many, like, themes in that regard, I thought. Oh, and the last scene. This is heavy spoiler. So, yeah, heavy spoiler. it's also a callback. So, Broly doesn't call Goku by Kakarot throughout the entire movie. And at the end of it, Broly survives. Spoiler, he survives. He's a character, he's canon, you're probably gonna see him in the future. I'm happy for that. I'm happy for that too. Um, and then he says, well, what's your name? Blase Blase. He's like, I'm Goku. But you know what? You can call me Kakarot. And I felt it at that moment. Because one, he calls Goku Kakarot in the movies. And two, that's like Goku finally accepting his Saiyan heritage. Yeah, it was a, it was a call back <laughs> to all, everything, you know, that's built up there. And the thing, the last thing, I, I, I mean, I know we kind of debated a little bit about the Superman origin of mm -hmm. Goku and everything, but the last thing they do before sending Goku off to Earth is, don't forget us, Goku, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, he hits his head, obviously, he has no idea who Bardock or Gine are. Yeah, Gine is finally introduced. Infant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so how could he remember? <laughs> like, what do you mean? I was thinking, like, what do you mean, don't remember, don't forget? But then that last line, you know, calls mm -hmm. back to that because, like, you know, that means that it's still a part of him and he finally accepts that as being a part of him after all these years. So 40 year, 50 year old man is finally, like, <laughs> accepting that entire part of him, you know. And it's yeah. It's pretty cool to it's see. It's a long time. And also, it's like, it has some themes too, you know, like Asian Americans or, like, just, you know, ethnic groups that aren't really familiar with their culture in general and they become so Americanized. Goku became Americanized in a sense. And you were talking about how it, it was very relevant for you as you know yeah. a black man too, you know, because I see so many articles that come out about how like oh yeah, the Freeza dragon straight called Saiyans monkeys and they were in slavery. <laughs> like if that isn't like cute to black people, I don't know what is. Yeah, I know you told me that, and I was like, oh my god, I I think I thought about this once, but it never really like registered for me until you like said it. Like I was like, oh my gosh, that, warrior race. That's you know, so true. Black yeah, are yeah. Seen as big, strong athletes to pick. The yeah, color. you're absolutely <laughs> right, and with crazy hair. Tio, would you recommend Dragon Ball Super Broly? Oh, absolutely. Great animation, great fight choreography, great voice acting. Like I really, I really like the voice acting yeah, a yeah. lot. Vic, thanks, Vic. Thanks for getting Sean, us in, bro. Sean always delivers. Broly, yeah. <laughs> and then they, they, everyone came through. Monica, Real is in the best sounding Bulma, and I think in this one, I don't know what it was, but mm -hmm. she did really good. In this she movie did really, too. really well. Yeah, everyone did fantastic. Um, all the fan service moments from Weiss kind of getting in there for a second to them. I, I definitely knew when. Speaking of fan service, enough with the ass shots. We see, we see what you're doing. You, you had we like saw you in shots. Discount Gamora. We saw you in Discount Gamora and what you're and doing. And the Freezer Cross shot. We saw that too. We saw the Freezer Cross shot. My friend Purdue is going to be really happy about that. You heard him in our interview with Sean. Oh, I guess the Broly shower scene was fan service too. Now I the think Broly about it. <laughs> I forgot about the Broly shower scene, but yeah, it's there. Right? See what you're doing. <laughs> Guy is slick. Oh my gosh. Yeah. But this is a great movie for everyone. Even if you're not into Dragon Ball, I'd recommend you go watch it. Um, just go have a good time because uh, it's not every day that this is this is such a wide release compared to Battle of Gods and Resurrection F. Because mm -hmm. both of those felt like, you know, we'll release it for maybe a weekend or two and then kind of get it out of theaters, right? Yeah. I looked online at the schedule. The schedule's got this like like six times a day. Six yeah. times a day at each theater this movie's going to be playing. They're playing in Ohio right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're playing in Ohio already? Mm -hmm. Oh my, okay, yeah. It's in the theaters. Yeah, my yeah. friends told me, I was like, it's already there? Yeah, yeah. This yeah. movie's huge. I was, I was this close to seeing it in Japan, and then now I, I think I want to go rewatch it in Japan. I'm not watching this, uh, Animation, just yeah, just to see, because like, the animation is gorgeous. I'll also see if the, they change the dialogue in I think they I think they change a little bit of dialogue personally just from the lip flaps and mm -hmm. yeah everyone's lip flaps look very different from the, because they have more budget so they can be a little more expressive with them and everything but gotcha. all the fan service from Frieza getting his butt kicked you know once that happened yeah once he that was so funny <laughs> like there was a part I knew it was gonna happen there was a part where pretty much Vegeta and Goku are pretty much just tired of fighting Broly and they're like okay let's let's, let's hand him off to you. here you go have fun here Frieza go, have fun Frieza and it's like Frieza's just like what? Because like Frieza is using Broly to get revenge on yeah. the Saiyans because what happened was that Broly had latent potential ability and the King Vegeta pretty much was like I don't want you being better than my son so we're gonna send you off to this desolate planet Right, and so Broly's dad, he was pretty salty about that. I mean, if I was on a planet for 40 plus years because some guys wanted to exile me just because my 
just because he was jealous of my son being better than his son, I would, I would have some strong hate for that. And now the Saints are dead. You know, that's not really spoilers. The Saints have been dead for years. Saints have been dead for 40 years. <laughs> for years. <laughs> so he's like, who else can I take this revenge on? Oh, Vegeta's kid? All right. Go handle that, son. <laughs> Get him. Yeah, but, and yeah, oh, man, last thing, the last point before we completely wrap this up, the, the camaraderie between Goku and Vegeta, mm -hmm. like, got Battle of Gods and Resurrection F, the way that they've been acting together, I think it all kind of led up to that, you know? Mm -hmm. The way they, they sort of respect each other by the end, you know, that was really awesome to see. It so, was. Yeah, but go watch this movie. So much fan service, so much fun. Oh, You're going to have a great Vegeta time. Vegeta and Goku wear the fly as jackets, I swear. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, probably oh. saw it in the trailer, but I was so mad when he just ripped it. I was like, oh. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm down to get the Vegeta one if you get the Goku one, man. Oh, yeah. That green. I love that green that he wears. Let's flash that image on the screen from the Comic Con. I would just love that they just fought in, fought in those jackets the entire yeah, time. Yeah. It's, it's, it's been a fun ride seeing, because I saw them announce the, the, they debuted the trailer at Comic Con, and mm -hmm. I was in that room when they debuted that trailer, okay. and I saw the, like, image of Super Saiyan God Vegeta. I was like, how are they going to play this in and everything? They had all the different forms laid out on the screen and it was, yeah, it's just been, it's been so funny that net, like, okay, then I got to go to the premiere. Oh man, like what a life. I feel very lucky and fortunate and I'm glad you got to go experience your first red carpet. Your first red carpet is Dragon Ball. It wasn't planned, y'all. He was just saying what he was going to do. <laughs> That's all he said. You like, saw the we're, blog. We're you saw the it. blog. You can check that out uh, yeah. in the channel, too. The link it's right over. here. We're going to see this premiere. Do you got tickets? No, but we're going to get them. <laughs> we're going to get... I said it was somehow. <laughs> nine out of ten times, we're going to get in. So, And you had the best time of your life. So, mm. I think that even if you don't go to a premiere, it's a great movie to watch with friends. You're going to talk about it for days. And just have a great time at it, okay? Thanks for watching. This has been Cinepresto, okay? Peace.